When you're serious about joinery, you have to think about tenons. And when you think about tenons, you probably should start to think about different tenoning jigs. Well, Powermatic has a new and improved version that I think you're really gonna like, so let's check it out. Hit it. Now before we do a quick tour, let's just review the basics here. The point of a tenoning jig is to be able to hold a workpiece vertically so it's nice and safe. You could do other angles as well, but the idea is you can't run this across a table saw safely, but if it's attached to a jig like this and clamped in place with the jig riding in the miter slot, now we could safely make those cuts, remove the cheek material, and create a nice smooth accurate tenon like this. So we've got a nice wide work surface here. This will support all different size work pieces. You've got a clamping system that's very easy to move around to various locations so you can get the clamping pressure exactly where you need it. There's a stop back here which can adjust to any angle that you could possibly need as well as this little magnify gauge here so you can kind of return to various different settings as you go. The jig is very easy to adjust from front to back simply by sliding it along on this sort of angular path here which is pretty cool. We've got a micro adjustment feature up at the front. And back between our two handles, we have two stops. And these little stop blocks are really where the magic happens with this jig. Instead of having to measure and mark everything out and trying to dial in the perfect setting, this jig allows us to use the work pieces and the tools themselves to get things exactly where they need to be. So let me show you an example of how we can make a 3 8 inch mortise and tenon joint and then a quarter inch mortise and tenon joint and go from one setup to the other super fast. Now just to bring you up to speed, you can see I've cut a couple of mortises already. I've got my quarter inch one here and my 3 8 Of course, both of these done with a hollow chisel mortiser. Uh, I've also done my shoulder cuts at the table saw just to get these tenons ready for the jig, right? And we'll do a 3 8 on one side and a quarter inch on the other. Let's start with the 3 8 Now first thing I need to do is take my 3 8 chisel here and put it between these two blocks. And just very light pressure holding them together, I'm gonna take this little clamp and lock it down. In a very similar fashion, I'll take my tenon workpiece and put that in front of block number two and bring this guy back till it makes contact. And again, very light pressure. This time, I'm gonna tighten down the body with this knob here. Now on the other side of the jig, I'm gonna take my workpiece and clamp it in place against my stop. And now we can make our cuts. Yeah, baby. If you can hold the piece upside down and the workpiece doesn't fall out, that's a good slip fit. Exactly what we're looking for. Let's test the quarter inch. Same exact process as before, only this time a quarter inch chisel. All right, so let's test that fit. And that, that is on the money. Now if your results aren't perfect, there is a micro adjustment feature with this jig and you can thicken the tenon a little bit or thin it down depending on what you need. But what I found is once it's calibrated to the machine and everything is perfected from then on, as long as you get your stop locks in the right place and you use the right tools to do it, you should have no problem. There was no magic video editing done there. I was able to go from quarter inch to three eighths and nail it both times, right? So I don't think you're really gonna have to use that micro adjustment dial very much in the future, but it's there if you need it. Now, the big question is, why would you want a tenoning jig in the first place? Let me see if I could give you a few reasons. The first is human error. So let's say you're using a miter gauge to cut your tenon with a workpiece flat. This is a pretty typical setup. As you're pushing the workpiece through, we have a tendency to sometimes put a little bit more pressure or less pressure on the workpiece, and that could actually result in a tenon of differing thicknesses if you have multiple workpieces. You also have a blade that's constantly pushing up on the workpiece that makes it want to lift a little bit. So when it's all said and done, you not only can have a little bit of a, a choppy face here, but the final thickness might be a little bit off, and you need to go to the workbench and use hand tools to perfect the fit. But a tenon cut made with a tenoning jig leaves nice, smooth cheeks like this, and because the workpiece is totally immobilized, all you're doing is pushing it forward and back so that as long as your pieces are all the same thickness, your tenons should all be the same thickness. So whether you have to do two of these or 40 of these, they're all going to be exactly the same and there's no fine tuning needed. Now you should also have noticed that there was no measurement needed. I didn't have to mark anything out. There's no layout. I basically just used the workpiece and the tool itself to be able to get the measurement I needed in the perfect cut. Now I used a hollow chisel mortising chisel for that, but I suspect that if you use a router bit to do the same thing, we should be able to get the same results because your router bit is a fixed diameter, right? So it should work just as well. The other thing I like about tenoning jigs is that you have versatility in the angles that you use. So if you're making some oddball angled tenons, maybe you do a 
lot of chairs and things where you need that type of work, you've got the option to hit those angles perfectly and a pretty easy way to cut that tendon. Now, of course, there are a lot of mortise and tendon solutions on the market today, and they're all competing for your hard-earned money. So how do you know which one to go for? Well, it's not something I can really tell you. You need to look at all the options and see what's right for the type of work that you do. But if you do mortise and tendons, more classic traditional joinery, and you do a lot of mortise and tendons, a tendoning jig is definitely something you would want to consider because you could really batch this stuff out in no time and get really, really good results, right? So Powermatic's new tendoning jig, it's definitely, um, I could say hands down, the best tendoning jig on the market. Most of them look like this. This is kind of the old Powermatic jig that's out there. And these work just fine, but I'd say it's about time someone came up with an advancement in the simple table saw tendoning jig. Right? Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.